Yo guys, what's up? This is Dave, the Open Source Gangster here. So people always ask me, how can I install Linux alongside the current operating system? Now for a newcomer, this might seem like a daunting task. So I'm going to take you through the whole process using Windows 8 as an example. Now in order to do this, you will need to have a USB flash drive with at least 1GB of free space available and that's it. So let's get to it. Alright, the first thing we need to do is download the Ubuntu ISO image file. So go over here to the right and choose your flavor. Now if you're running a 64-bit capable processor or if you're running Windows 8, choose 64-bit. Elsewise, if you're unsure or you're running a 32-bit processor, choose 32-bit and hit download. Okay, now open up a universal USB installer. What you want to do is select the distribution you downloaded. If you're running 64-bit, you're going to choose AMD 64 Ubuntu 13.04. If you download 32-bit, then choose Ubuntu 13.04 i386. After that, select the location of your ISO. Then select the location of your USB flash drive. You can choose to format it if you have something on here. And finally, if you want to set up a file size for storing changes on the drive you can but it's not necessary. Then go down to create. Okay once the installation complete what you want to do is reboot your computer but keep your USB flash drive connected because we're going to be booting from that USB flash drive. Alright so I'm restarting my computer right now and like I said you want to keep your USB flash drive connected just because we're going to use that to boot from. As soon as you see the splash screen, what you want to do is hit F12. So F12, just rapidly hit F12 as soon as you see your motherboard splash screen. F12 should give you to your boot menu. Now most modern motherboards support USB flash drive booting and in fact if you're running Windows 8, your motherboard most likely, I'm 90% sure, will support it. From here what you want to do is navigate to your USB flash drive. So you see all your hard drives connected, I even see my Android phone connected, what I want to do is navigate all the way down to my flash drive and I believe it is this one right here and going to hit enter and here we go we went from flash drive we can see we're right now in the grub bootloader we're going to go to try ubuntu without installing just because there's one thing I do want to show you all right so once we are inside trying ubuntu I just want to take you go to the search and type in gparted and I just want to show you the gparted editor. Now, if you're planning to install Ubuntu alongside the current Windows operating system, then just ignore everything which I'm about to show you. However, if you plan to install Ubuntu on a separate hard drive or a separate partition, this is going to be of help to you. So right now in gparted, we see our current hard drives listed. For myself, I want to install Ubuntu on my one terabyte drive. Now, as you can see, I pretty much just went through and deleted all my partitions on there. So now I have 931 gigabytes of unallocated space. Now, I don't want to use all 931 gigabytes for Ubuntu. I actually maybe only want to use 150 of them. And that's the reason why I just want to show you this, so that you know that you can create partitions. However, I actually advise you to create a partition during installation. But if you wanted to now, just delete any partitions you have or you may not be using, and just free up some space to run Ubuntu on. But like I said, this only concerns you if you're doing this on a separate hard drive or if you want to do this. Doing it alongside of Windows, don't worry about any of this partition stuff. And don't delete Windows <laughs> because that would be a big issue. Alright, let's go to install Ubuntu 13.04. Installing Ubuntu. Woo! So, English or whatever language you're using. I'm already connected to the internet. Like I said, if you're not connected to the internet, that would definitely help you. And you want to select download updates while installing and install third party software continue. Alright, now this screen will be different depending on how your setup is. If you're running Windows on your main hard drive, then you might have an option that says install Ubuntu alongside Windows. If you're running it on multiple hard drives or if you have a multiple hard drive setup like I do, then you probably don't have that option. So if you have that option, great, choose that and your life will be very, very easy. Elsewise, we're going to do a little work here. So let's go down to something else. We're going to hit continue. Okay, cool. Now what we can do is navigate to our hard drive of all the unallocated space. So that shouldn't be too hard to find because it'll be free space, bam, right there. 
Um, and just to be sure, we know if we navigate down that that drive, the cheap the Shiba drive is the SDB, and that's right here. Okay, now let's do this. We're going to create a few partitions on here. The first partition we're going to create is going to be the boot partition. We're going to create that as a primary partition, and that's going to be only a hundred. Maybe we'll make that two hundred megabytes. Two hundred. Oh no, not that many. Two hundred megabytes beginning. Use as. Yep. Ex, wow. Extension four. Mount point boot. And okay. So this is our boot partition. Next, we're gonna go back and we're gonna make another partition. Now let's make our root partition. So for the root partition, this is where the OS is going to get installed at, along with any applications that you install. So you do want to make this big, you don't have to go crazy with it, but just be mindful and think in the future how many applications do you plan to install on Ubuntu. So um, I have a lot of hard drive space to kill, so I'm just going to make this 40 gigabytes, 40,000 megabytes, primary again. Extension 4, and we're going to mount it as root. That little slash right there. Hit OK. All right, cool. Let's go back. Next, we're going to create another primary. Now, just keep in mind, we can have up to four primary partitions on one drive. So, yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, next, we want to create a home partition. So actually, you know what? I'm thinking I'm gonna change these. I'm gonna change this to logical. Not that it's, it's not gonna make any difference performance. It's just you know because you only have four primaries, and I really don't know why. <laughs> all right. So the home partition is where all your user settings, all your personal files, your downloads, pictures, photos, all that good stuff is gonna be held at. So let's make that as well. 140 gigabytes. Like I said, I'm not even gonna use all the space. So I don't even know why. Doing that. Uh, is that right? Mountain zeros? Yeah, I believe so. Logico. And we'll mount it as home. I want to change our, I'm going to remove our root partition just because I actually want to go back and remount that as a uh, logical. Oh, I already did it. Awesome. Logico, root. All right. There we go. All right, cool. Finally, we want to go back and we'll make one more partition. So where's all of our free space? Free space. And this partition is going to be for the swap file. Now, I have 16 gigs of RAM. And pretty much a swap file is just like virtual memory, meaning that when you run out of RAM or computer, it forces programs to save to a hard drive space, um, pretty much a file on your hard drive. It acts as kind of like backup RAM in a sense. Honestly, like I said, if you have a lot of RAM, like 8, 16 gigs, I don't really think you have to worry too much about this. So, with that in mind, I'm going to make the swap only 3 gigs large. And I'm going to change it to swap area. Okay. Alright, so just a recap here. What we have here is we have different, 4 different partitions. We have our main primary one right here. Primary partition, which is our boot. Um, we have our root which is where the applications get installed in the operating system. We have a very large home partition, which is the user settings and files, and we have a swap area. And lastly, I'm left with, like, still a lot of free space that I'm going to format eventually to FAT32 for Windows, but that's a different story. Okay, let's go to install now. Select our time zone. Bam, New York. English, US. My name. And, okay, continue. And it's going to go through the installation. So sit back, relax, and watch it work its magic. All right, so once it completes, you should see a restart now. So let's go and click that. And it's gonna restart our computer, which is great. And let's see if it takes us into the grub menu. Perfect, woo! Okay, and as you can see, what it does, it takes us right into the grub menu. Where we see we have Ubuntu, Advanced Options, Windows Recovery Environment, and stuff like that. So, okay, I just took too long making the option, so it's booting me right into Ubuntu, which is awesome. So, hopefully you get to this point where you're booting right up. Okay, here we are, into Ubuntu. Now, before I let you go here, I know you're dying to like stop watching this video. Before I let you go, what I wanna do is say, one thing you should do immediately is update your packages. So just go over to the search, type in software, 
ng software and updates and make sure you update all your packages software updater and here we go the software updater is going to check for updates it's going to download the updates and perform them which is great and there you go and since there's software available which we can download so all right guys this has been how to install and do boot ubuntu and windows 8 on the same computer I highly encourage you to try this out, and it's really fun. Like I said, Ubuntu has a lot to offer here, and I'll definitely be doing more videos on Linux and Ubuntu and all the stuff we can do with this. But definitely try it out. Definitely at least try it out uh, with the live USB, and have fun with it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to go down there and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you want to stay updated with my latest videos, go up there and hit that subscribe button. You can also find me on Twitter at TheDaveGeek along with Facebook and Google+. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more Galaxy videos. Thanks.